Hi, this is Risa and welcome back to my Stitch Along series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stitch a Trish Burr needle painting design of a blue tit bird on a pocket mirror. I'll also show you how to assemble the pocket mirror kit itself. I'm going to use Trish Burr's book titled Embroidery Transfers, which has about 70 iron-on transfers of her patterns. And I'm going to choose a design that fits this bezel here for this pocket mirror. Um, this book has transfers from all of her um, books and patterns and it was recently published in 2020 just before the pandemic. You can watch my review of this book as well as her miniature needle painting book by clicking on the link above. There are several patterns that sort of fit this bezel and these designs are from her book Miniature Needle Painting but I'm going to choose this one of the blue tit with wild roses pattern and it just about fits within the bezel design so what I'm going to do is flip through the book and find the iron-on transfer as you can see here and I'm going to cut it out so I can iron it on to the fabric now the good thing about this book is that it has a So here is the pocket mirror kit, my six inch hoop, and I'm going to use a cotton linen blend fabric uh, for this particular design. Now I'm going to lay the pattern on a piece of cloth before I iron it on to the fabric. Uh, you will need some butter paper or baking sheet, and then I'm just going to press a hot iron on top of the pattern. Now I found that Although it says you can you, you know, press the iron for about a minute, it took me much longer to get the pattern to transfer on to the fabric. Now make sure you have your steamer off uh, before you iron it on. So let's see if this has transferred. I should have probably waited a little longer, uh, but this is a permanent ink transfer so it's not going to rub off. I'm going to use a heat erasable pen to draw the boundary of the bezel. Um, had I waited longer that pattern would have uh, seeped through to the other side of the fabric but I think this is good enough to work with. Now I'm using a light pad to transfer the edge or boundary of the bezel itself and I'm just adjusting the pattern a little bit um, as I would like the bird to fit in well and part of the flower. So I'm using heat erasable pen here to just sort of draw the lines of the actual bezel. Now that the pattern is on the fabric, I am going to mount it on a six inch hoop like so. I'm starting the embroidery for the stem. And as you can see, I'm starting my work from the front of the embroidery piece by just stitching a few stab stitches. I like doing this rather than having a knot in my thread uh, to limit the number of knots at the back. Now I'm gonna start using split stitch with DMC381. The threads that have been listed in Trish Burr's book are essentially anchor threads and at the back of her miniature needle painting book, there is a conversion from anchor to DMC and vice versa. So as you can see, I am stitching stem stitches all the way to the bottom. Now to end off, I do the same thing, just a few stab stitches. All of this will be covered by the overlay. I've finished one line of one color, and now I'm gonna start with the second DMC color, which is 524. Now the colors aren't exactly like uh, the anchor threads and therefore there may be slight variations in color uh, but I'm not worried about that I think they come pretty close and moving on to the third line with DMC 522 as you can see it's pretty much split stitch all along the stem and then it gets darker with DMC 3051 uh, to give it that that shadow now there are two ways of ending off. Uh, one was to just end off from the front and a second way of also doing it or to bring the thread to the front again is just sort of stitching under the threads like so and then bringing up the needle back to the top. 
so this is um, this is when you need that thread again um, for another layer of highlighting for the stem To stitch the leaves, I'm going to start with an outline stitch using DMC 3787 here. So essentially using split stitch to outline the leaf. And then I will start stitching the leaves using long and short stitch, which is the predominant technique used for needle painting. So as you can see here, you bring the needle on the outside of that split stitch and then you stitch long and short stitches so one stitch would be longer than the other as the stitch uh, is named and then you move to the different shades of the leaf as per the instructions Now I'm going to start with the petals using white DMC thread to stitch the outlines with split stitch and then I'm going to fill it up with the long and short stitches uh, based on the color scheme that Trish Burr has listed in her book. Here again as you can see I am ending off and starting from the front of the fabric to avoid the knots at the back. Now the first shade for the long and short stitch is DMC white. Again, as you can see, long and short stitches are about um, three to five millimeters from the edge, starting from the edge of the split stitch. Uh, I'm going to stitch the second row as well with the same white thread. And here you can see another way of ending your embroidery that is just to take the thread between the back of the threads that have been stitched now i'm moving to dmc 762 which is sort of a pearl gray kind of uh, shade you can't see it uh, or you can't see the difference in the video itself and finally move to um, five, 452 dmc 452 for the central part so once again here stitching long and short stitches and then filling up the gaps moving to light gray or pearl gray 762 and then finally to I'm going to stitch the center of the flower with straight stitches first with DMC 3078 and then moving on to the next shade which is I'm going to use DMC 3021, so not as per the instructions in Trishpa's book. And I've also added in a color DMC 300 to stitch French knots on the stamens here.
I'm now going to move on to the bird and I'm going to start with the tail here. Again, I am starting from the front of the embroidery with simple sap stitches and I am stitching the outline of the tail first, after which I am going to stitch long and short stitches. So starting again with the same thread, I am stitching long and short stitches as you can see. Essentially starting from the tip, going to either side of the tail. I'm not going to provide a live commentary of me stitching the tail. You can follow on as I switch the color of the threads and that's indicated at the top of the video that you will see. So here I've moved to DMC 3023 and uh, you can keep following as you stitch the tail along with me. I'm moving on to stitching the feathers of the bird and here I'm going to stitch irregular long and short stitches so you'll see that the stitches are pretty haphazard uh, and that gives the feathery look to to the bird uh, unlike the tail where and the flower where the stitches were pretty regular and straight so here you can see that the second row of long and short stitches sort of overlaps at an angle uh, to the first row and the third row is a different shade again, um, you know, in different sort of irregular stitches. And you can see also that I am stitching under the stem or the branch that is there so that there is no overlap uh, between the feathers and the branch to give it a more 3D look. Finally, to finish off the body of the bird, I'm going to stitch two bullion knots for the claws, for each claw. So essentially wrap around about 10 wraps around the needle. It's going to be tough to pull the needle out, so make sure you don't wrap those threads around too tightly. Uh, and that's the first of four claws that I've finished. And you can do the same for the next three. I'm going to stitch stab stitches or straight stitches to form the eyes of the bird here with DMC 3021.
For the center of the eye, I'm going to stitch two or three stab stitches with DMC3. Here's a completed embroidery. I've ironed the cloth so you can see that the line that I used as a border has now disappeared because I used a heat erasable pen. So now what I need to do is take the pocket mirror kit and here's the pocket mirror and I have a bezel that comes with the kit that I can use to wrap the fabric around it. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is try and position the bezel and mark out about two centimeters on all sides of it and that's going to be the seam or the margin that I'm going to cut around the embroidery.
The final step is to attach the embroidery on to the pocket mirror. As you can see, the back has been pulled tight and taut across the bezel. Now what I need to do is to apply this with the super glue that I have and I'm going to use E6000. Here it's a transparent super glue and you can use any stick around the house to apply it quite smoothly, not so lumpy, otherwise it's just going to ooze out from the sides. So make sure you just wipe off the edges before you actually attach the embroidery piece. Now I'm going to attach it on top here and I'm going to use paper clips to fasten in place on all sides. I'm using the bigger paper clips for the main parts and then smaller paper clips for the corners here and I'm going to leave that for 24 hours. And here's the completed pocket mirror. Isn't it just adorable? I can't wait to pull it out of my bag. I hope you found this video useful. If you do, don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification button. See you again next time. Bye bye.